This is my friend Arthur. Arthur's actually an ant eater, and I am enlisting his help to eat the ants in my pants. I know that sounds really bad, doesn't it? That's terrible. But it's just a little book about Arthur and how he doesn't like his nose, and he's an ant eater. And of course, ant eaters have big, long noses, and they eat ants. Now, ants in your pants, of course, means to be um, excessively restless, eager. Um, overactivity, hyperactivity, right? ADHD, which both of my kids have. And I was often accused in my childhood about having ants in my pants because I wasn't that kid that could sit still in class. And for a girl, that was pretty unusual in, in back in the day. There were probably a couple of us, but mostly the boys were super hyperactive and I fit in more with them than I did with the little girls because of my energy level. Um, ants in our pants um, actually is a good thing. I mean, it's kind of like ADHD. People think that um, ADHD and, and uh, is a bad thing. I and dyslexia and dyscrasia. I personally think it's a superpower um, because I think it allows people to look at the world differently. And when you can look at the world differently, anybody who can look at the world differently and can step back and and see things differently, that's that's a gift. That is a way to actually um, attract a group of people to you that you are here to help that actually need your help because they are seen as different and sometimes um, treated as outcasts or bullied or, or not treated right and fairly. Don't know why I got off on that tangent. Um, but ants in our pants, I, I've always used that and used that energy in positive ways in my life. Um, not, all, not always, but for the most part. I mean, there were times when I was younger where I didn't understand why I felt different and why I thought differently and why I looked at the world differently than other people. And that was confusing. When you're young, that's confusing and, and frustrating and worrisome. And you're wondering, you know, geez, because I want to do this, am I crazy? Is this, is it just impossible because other people have told me it's not possible or can I really figure out a way to do it? And I usually took the energy that was excess energy in other people's opinions. And I put that toward proving that I could do things that people told me I, I can't do because you know what, there's no such thing as can't. So ants in your pants. A lot of us are feeling antsy, right? And, the, and the, the word antsy actually comes from the expression ants in your pants. Um, it's one of those idioms that hasn't been around that long, only since probably the 1930s. Um, a former army general who was the head of the uh, National Recovery Administration or something in 1933 to 1934 is credited with, with making this expression popular. Maybe he didn't invent it. There's not really any information as to where it exactly came from, but I, I suspect probably his parents used it on him or his grandparents when he was young. But he used the expression and made it really popular, ants in your pants, meaning people were overactive and over uh, overzealous or, or restless or too eager. Um, and I don't know if it was used in a bad way or a good way. I think it's like anything else. You can use it in a positive way or a negative way. I always decided to turn it into a positive because it makes life a lot more fun. So how do you deal with feeling anxious or feeling ants in your pants or feeling restless because things are changing? Whenever things are changing, we feel restless and antsy. We either, we go, you know, we can go all different ways with it, but a lot of people will turn inward and get really, really quiet in times of change and, and go into themselves and hide away when there's a lot of change and things that are outside of their control going on. And then other people get super duper active and hyper and high energy and they're like, oh my God, I gotta do something. So <clears throat> wherever you fall on that spectrum, I happen to fall in the, oh my God, I gotta do something camp. And so whenever I'm feeling um, restless or ants in my pants, I have to create something or do something. So when I wake up this morning deciding, since the president and our governor has decided that we will all be um, safer at home through April 30th, that's a whole nother month added on to what's already been about three weeks of um, shutdown activity for many of us. And so I decided this morning, I'm gonna do starting April 1st, even though I'm finishing up one challenge on, on April 1st, Wednesday, I'm gonna start another challenge right away and it's gonna be a 30 day challenge for the whole quarantine or whatever you wanna call yourself, um, period. And the whole month of April called get up and go. Let's just get up and go. Get up and, not get up and go out and interact with people physically. Get up and do something. Get up and go. Get up and go get busy moving your life in the direction you want it to be. So that will start Wednesday. I'm not sure what time of day I'll do that, but I'll do it live and then it'll be available through recording um, so people can participate in that. I, I 
I just had the idea this morning when I woke up, so I have not even done my, what are my 30 topics gonna be yet, but I'm sure by the end of today, I'll have those 30 topics and 30 activities and 30 things that we're gonna do to get up and go and make sure that every person that participates in this challenge absolutely positively is better off 30 days from now by their own standards and their own uh, estimation, not mine. It doesn't matter if I think they're better off, it's do you think you're better off uh, at the end of that 30 day period than they were as they entered the month of April. No matter what their situation, no matter what their circumstances, I guarantee everyone and anyone who participates in this challenge will be not just you know a little better off, they will be significantly, dramatically better off than if they didn't participate in the challenge. Uh, so that's how I deal with uh, issues of feeling like I have ants in my pants and I need to do something. I actually do something. I actually take some action and do some activity. I am a firm believer that you do what you can with what you've got right now. I say that all the time. I also say, you know, you, you get out of things what you put into them. So what will you put into this downtime? What are you putting into, if you're down? There, there are business, I have businesses and, and uh, entities that I'm working with that are like freaking out because they have to grow and they have to supersize their production. They have to supersize things. They have to switch to producing things like ventilators and, and gowns and things that they've never manufactured in their organization before. But here's the thing, manufacturing is a process, right? If you can manufacture one thing, there's a way to transition that and manufacture something else. It's a process, just like everything else. Uh, and so there's some people that are freaking out and have ants in their pants because they're growing so fast and they're having to uh, meet demands that they never thought they'd meet before. And then there are other businesses and other industries that are just dead stopped right now. And they're like, how am I going to survive? How am I going to save this business? How am I going to, you know, get my people back? How am I going to hire my people? How am I going to make my rent this month? How am I going to make my house payment this month? How am I going to get food for my family this month? Because it isn't just a week or two. And you know what? The vast majority of people, and I'm sure we'll see the statistics later on, but the vast majority of the people, at least in the United States and in many other countries, are living in a barely get by mode, a paycheck to paycheck mode, or they're living on credit. And that situation, this situation is going to make that so significantly worse. And of course, credit card companies are smiling all the way to their billions of dollars in riches and their high interest rates as people max out their credit cards and max out their situation. So I'm here and one of the things we'll do in the get up and go challenge is find ways to make sure that you are not doing that, not maxing out the credit card companies and making them rich in a time when they should be being adjusted just like everybody else. And so should other things and other industries, not um, not just the, the us, the little guys, the, the human beings, uh, we people, uh, everybody should be uh, having to figure this out and not be getting bailouts to the tune of $60 billion if for their industry and for their businesses when uh, there's so much else going on. There's got to be a, and you know, it's, it's all political, which is scary, right? But uh, we'll all get through this working together and helping one another out. So working on that, today is day eight of the Live Challenge Workshop. And our bonus session today is all about challenge successes and how you can use challenges to really absolutely get whatever you want and get what you want for the people that you serve. And when you get them a result, everything and anything is possible because they will, they will work with you even in challenging times like this. They will um, come running to your door and say, oh my gosh, I need you to help me. Fun day today was day know what day it was it was day 83 of the fun we're doing a 365 day challenge to do one fun thing every day now we started this at the beginning of the year and it's pretty exciting because it's the perfect thing every day I'm hanging out with a four-year-old and we need to do at least one fun thing every day we usually do more than one fun thing but one thing better be fun for her every day or grandma's gonna be miserable so it's it's worked out pretty well that that 2020 was the year of fun for, uh, for me personally and hopefully for the other people that are participating in the challenge as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, my daughter went to be with her husband so and took the dog, so it is super duper quiet in my temporary living situation and I'm excited that my granddaughter is coming today so it isn't just me. Uh, otherwise, I am using this time to clean my basement. I know, freaky, right? But I'm using this time, the, the time that I would have instead of just hanging out watching Netflix and things, which you know, my, my first inclination is, oh wow, I could watch some cool series. I've never seen Game of Thrones. I've never seen some of these things. I could do that. But instead I'm like, okay, nope, for at least one hour a day, I am working on cleaning and organizing and sorting the things in my basement. Meaning, 
even though I just moved and got rid of 90% of my physical belongings, I still have way too much stuff, way too many clothes, way too many office type supply things, way too much, way too many physical things still. So I committed to, during this next one month period, working on my basement for an hour a day. Now, I don't know that it's gonna take me 33 hours cleaning my basement. I doubt it, but it will give me the opportunity to sort through and organize things in a way that I've never been able to organize them before because I'm going to dedicate an hour a day to doing it. And I don't recall that I've ever in the history of my life actually dedicated that much time to organizing and cleaning a project or organizing a project in my, my personal home. Um, it'll be kind of fun because it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a walk down memory lane to see things that I forgot that I even had or owned in some circumstances. And next, next will be my storage unit. That, that baby's going to have to get some attention, but I need rides there, so that's a little bit more of a challenge to deal with that than it is to deal with um, the basement. So, what are you going to do? What can you do? What can you do with what you've got right now to move your life in a forward direction, to move your life where you want it to go so that your life BC before Corona, before COVID-19, and PC, not politically correct, but post-Corona, post, I hate saying Corona because I feel so bad for the beer company, but <clears throat> post-COVID-19 uh, is, is better than it was before. And guess what? It absolutely positively can and will and should be better for you, right? Is it gonna be better for everybody? No, and why not? Because a lot of people are not going to use this time to do the things that they can do to make sure that they're in a better position than they were going into this. I have already put things in place to make sure that I am never as unprepared as I was for this incident to happen. And and I'm the first to admit, I am, I'm doing just fine. And part of why I'm doing just fine is I'm not focusing on what I can't do. I'm not focusing on what I've lost. I'm not focusing on what we're not supposed to do. I am focused 100% on what is working, what I'm grateful for, what I can do, not only to help myself and my family, but other people as well. And as long as I'm focused on that, and I'm, and I'm grateful, I'm grateful to wake up in a warm house every day, right? I'm grateful that I have food. Is it, is it all the things I love to eat and wish I was in my refrigerator right now in my pantry? No, absolutely not. A lot of the things I thrive on are not available right now, but I know they'll be available again in the not too distant future. And guess what? I also know I can survive for a month without them, right? With the exception maybe of sea salt caramels. I might need to find a stash of sea salt caramels somewhere. But what I've been hearing about the stores is that junk food and sweets and things like that, they're, they're not having any trouble stocking those. So people are actually taking care of themselves and buying out the good foods first, right? So that's a good sign. Anyway, that's my rambling for today. If I can help you in any way, if you want to participate in the Get Up and Go Challenge, ask in the comments below. Again, I'm not sure where I'm going to do it. I might just do it on my Facebook profile page or something like that. Or maybe I'll do it on LinkedIn. I haven't done a LinkedIn challenge yet, so maybe maybe this will be my experiment on LinkedIn. But I kind of doubt it because, well, maybe. I don't know. That's called indecisive, right? Maybe I'll do it on both places, my Facebook page and my LinkedIn. You never know. So anyway, if I can help you in any way, please ask in the comments below. I might not have the answer, but I've been around a long time. I've been involved in lots of stuff, lots of businesses, lots of, lots of experiences that a lot of people have never made it through, up to and including dying. So and maybe that's why this isn't bothering me so much. I've been dead, and once you've been dead, like real dead, um, a whole lot of stuff doesn't phase you anymore because I know I survived that once. Now I'm not going to survive it again, right? If I get the, the COVID-19, um, there's a very high probability that I would die from that. So I'm being super vigilant, right? And I'm being really careful. Um, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not really doing anything but hanging out in my house or going for walks. That's pretty much the extent of it, which is, you know, most people say, I'm going stir crazy. I got ants in my pants. I can't handle this. But guess what? We can handle so much more than we give ourselves credit for. And we can handle it. Guess what? We can handle it with kindness and love and ease and grace. Will we get on each other's nerves? Yeah. My daughter yelled at me yesterday as she was packing up and getting ready to go be with her husband. Because I was nagging her and worried, you know, and telling her to be careful. You know what? 
even before coronavirus and COVID ID, I always told my kids to drive safe and be careful every time they walk out the door, right? Always, I just always have. So it's not any different, but, they, but to people, they're, they're overly sensitive and they feel like it's different. And, and that's real, perceptions are reality. So that's it, that's all I've got today. Have an amazing day and I will of course be with you tomorrow.